The Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation brings you Crime Photographer. Hey, Ethelbert. Oh, hello, Casey. What's Tony Marvin worrying about over there? Why, he's writing a holiday poem. <laughs> And he's stuck for something to rhyme with Christmas stocking. But, Ethelbert, are you kidding? Certainly not. Oh, you mean... Anchor Anchor Hawking. Oh, gee, fellas, that's wonderful. Anchor Hawking. A great name in glass. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Marvin. Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, and its more than 10,000 employees bring you another adventure of Casey, crime photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Written by Alonzo Dean Cole. Our adventure for tonight, Christmas Shopping. Late afternoon, a crowded aisle in one of our city's largest department stores. Making slow headway through the jostling shoppers are... Casey, I've never seen the store so crowded. Yeah, we say that every year during the week before Christmas, Annie. Where, where are you taking me now, huh? Well, you haven't anything for your Aunt Harriet yet, oh, so I thought right. we'd look at umbrellas there. On this side of the store somewhere. Yeah. Annie, look, uh, you can pick up a much nicer umbrella for Aunt Harriet than I can. I trust your judgment, absolutely, Annie. So suppose, suppose you... I shop for all the uninteresting items while you go up to the toy department and watch the electric trains again. Uh, well, you know I've still got to pick up a few more things for my sister's kids, Annie. Mm-hmm. And... Hey, Annie, wait a minute. Hang on to your pocketbook. Keep an eye on that little guy in the black overcoat just ahead of us. Who? That's Fingers Fogarty, one of the best-known dips in the city. Pickpocket? Yep. Shove through this mob a little faster, Annie. Now keep him in sight. I think he's closing in on a prospect. You mean he's made up his mind about whose pocket he's going to pick? Sure, smart dips like fingers don't dive into just anybody's pocket. They hang around bars and wait for some guy to flash a roll, and they tail him. And if he gets into a crowd like this... Look, Fogarty's doing his stuff now, Henny. No. Yeah. That big fat guy he just bumped into, Fingers took a wallet from his inside pocket. Well, I didn't see him. Neither did the fat guy. Fingers is a smooth worker. Come on. You'll feel very badly when we stop his special brand of Christmas shopping, but pocket picking is considered antisocial. I've got to get Mr. Fogarty. Well, he squeezed through the crowd. I can't see him anymore. Uh, neither can I. Look, Casey, yell out for somebody to stop him. Well, I yell, stop thief. Well, you can't let him get away. He won't get away. Uh uh-uh. uh. Every cop in this precinct knows fingers. He'll be picked up quick after a charge is brought against him. I'll help that guy who lost his wallet bring the charge. Yes, too. if you appear as a witness. I will. There's the fat man. Excuse me, mister. Huh? <laughs> Something happened to you a minute ago that I don't think you know about. What do you mean? Your pocket was picked. My pocket? Yeah. A little guy bumped into you, and as he did, I saw his hand go into your inside pocket and come out with a wallet. Well, I happen to know who he is, and when you report your loss to the cops, I'll be glad... You're to... mistaken, mister. I didn't lose my wallet. Huh? I'm sure... I... I'm more sure. I tell you, I saw him. When a guy sees something that couldn't be seen, he's either goofy or drunk. On your way, fella. Well, I'll be... Hmm... Good thing you didn't get your hands on Fingers Fogarty. What, what he could have this? plastered you with a nice suit for false arrest. And I know he took a wallet from that fat guy's pocket. I was watching every move that Fingers made. Well, I was watching him, too, and I didn't see him take anything. And that fat man says he didn't lose a wallet, so... Okay, I'm goofy or drunk. Well, maybe you only need glasses. Well, I do after this. Several glasses. Let's head for the blue note. <laughs> You and Casey get your Christmas shopping done this afternoon, Miss Wims? Well, I accomplished quite a lot, Ethelbert, but not Casey. He got sore, and after that, nothing would please him. What'd you get sore about, pal? Nothing. Oh, he had a little eye trouble. Oh, gee, that's too bad. Did you see spots floating in front of you, Casey? My eyes are okay. Now, fill that glass up again, Ethelbert, and don't ask some silly questions. Mine too, Ethelbert. Right away, Miss Wims. Oh, now, Casey, don't you think it's about time you snapped out of your grouch? Well... 
It's pretty silly to get yourself all burned up just because you made a mistake. I didn't make a mistake, Annie. Fingers Fogarty took a wallet from that fat guy's pocket. What burns me up is I, I didn't find out why the fat guy denied it. Well, how could you find out? Oh, I don't know. But I'm supposed to be a newspaper guy, Annie. Well, we may have missed a story with pictures. Here's your refreshment, folks. Oh, thanks, Ethelbert. Say, have you stopped into your office since you finished shopping? Hey, you huh? bartender. Who's the boss here? Well, uh, what do you want? You want to buy a nice Christmas tree? You got some nice ones? A wagon full of them, fresh from Nova Scotia. Hmm. Let's see one. Well, I'll be right back. Say, uh, Casey, have you two stopped in at your office since you finished your shopping? Certainly not. This is our day off. Then you ain't heard the big news yet. What big news? One of your police reporters, Jake Birkin, was in a few minutes ago and tipped me off about it. Gee, he was all excited. What happened, Ethelbert? About half an hour ago, the cops arrested the kidnapper and murderer of Gregory Walters. They did? Where? Well, where'd they get him? Well, like you know, before the Walters family paid over that $50,000 ransom to the kidnapper, yeah, yeah. the FBI made a list of the serial numbers on the bills, yeah. which they circulated all over the of country. Of course, you know. we know all that, uh, Ethelbert. I... How's this tree, mister? Nice and bushy, huh? Hmm. Let's see one a little taller. A little taller, okay. Ethel Bird, will you tell us about that kidnapper? Well, I'm getting to it. Well, come on, come on. Well, a guy walks into a tavern over on 36th Street tonight, yeah. orders a drink, and hands a barkeep a 20-buck bill with one of them hot numbers on it. The barkeep checks the number, calls a cop, and when the cop searched the guy... He found about 500 bucks more of the ransom dough in his pocket. Well, Ethel, but who is the guy who had the ransom dough? The cops identified him yet? Well, they knew him as soon as they laid eyes on him. But, yeah. Ethelbert, who is he? Please. Uh, uh, hey, huh? hey. Is this trade big enough, mister? Uh, let's see. Well, let's see one a little thicker around the bottom. Thicker around the bottom. Ethelbert, yeah. will you please Casey tell and us? I know him. He's always been a small-time crook, and I was surprised to learn he was mixed up with anything so big as kidnapping and murder. Oh, say, will you tell us? I am telling you. It's that little runt, Fingers Fogarty. Fingers Fogarty? Yeah, the dip. He had Walter's ransom dough on him? About 500 bucks, just like I said. Naturally, Fingers denies having anything to do with the kidnapping. He said he lifted the dough out of the pocket of a guy who was Christmas shopping in S.J. Franken's department store. Franken's. Around 4 o'clock this afternoon. Casey Franken. And that fat guy denied he's been robbed. Do you think he was the oh, I one? can't see fingers as a kidnapper. He's always been just a slimy little sink thief. Hey, what's this about a fat guy, Casey? Annie, Annie, come on. We're going to tell Logan what happened in Franken's. Well, what did happen, Well, never Casey? mind. You'll hear it later, I, Ethelbert. I, so long. So long. Hey. Hey, is this one big enough for you, mister? I tell them to a whole complete news story in two short words, then they run off and leave me out on a limb. What limb? Too big? Hmm? Oh, you. Ah. Uh, oh, no, we've got to have a really big tree. Uh. You think Fingers Fogarty may be just the victim of circumstances, Casey. Circumstances peculiar to his profession. Miss Williams and I have told you what happened, Logan. You can add it up. Captain, have you got anything on Fogarty outside of the $500 found in his pocket? Uh, not yet, Miss Williams. A joint he lives in is being searched, but uh, we don't think he was chump enough to hide the rest of his ransom money there. Well, if he lifted the five C's in that fat guy, he has no rest of the dough to hide. Now, look, Casey... Fingers Fogarty knows you pretty well, doesn't he? Yeah, sure, he knows me, certainly. Now, hasn't it occurred to you that he may have put on an act for your benefit? Hmm? I don't get you. Now, let's assume that Fingers is the real kidnapper. It's been over a year since the ransom money was paid. Fingers has been careful. He hasn't tried to pass any of the 50 grand because he knows it's red hot. But now he figures the heat has died down, so he sends up a trial balloon. How do you mean trial balloon? Well, he's got a record as a dip, Miss Williams. He figures if he gets caught passing that dough, we'll believe that he lifted the money from a guy's pocket. And to cinch it, he acts like he's lifting it from a guy's pocket while Casey is watching him. <laughs> he, he picked you for his star witness, pal. Logan, huh? hasn't it occurred to you that the fat guy might have been sending up that trial balloon? Huh? What do you mean? Assume the fat guy is the real kidnapper. And he wants to know how safe it is to pass those ransom bills. He knows that Fingers is a pickpocket. Well, he goes to one of the little runt's hangouts and flashes a roll in front of him. And then he leaves the joint, saunters into a crowded store where it'll be easy for Fingers to work, 
And Fingers does exactly what's expected of him. Oh. That's a reasonable theory, Captain. Uh, sure. If Fingers gets caught passing that dough, the kidnapper learns about it from the papers and continues to let the money cool off. Also, Fingers has a long record. You cops won't believe anything he tells you. You'll tag him as the Walters kidnapper, which will leave the real one sitting pretty. The only thing the real kidnapper didn't figure was that someone might see Fingers take his wallet. Well, maybe you got something there, Casey. You and Miss Williams have never seen that fat guy before. Mm -hmm. No, no, but we'll know him if we see him again, though. Definitely. Uh, your description might fit a thousand guys in this town. I want you two to go up to the record room and, and look at some pictures we've got in the files. Uh, oh, great. That'll only take us about four or five hours, Lola. Oh, Casey. And this was to have been our night off. <laughs> Perhaps you'll forgive this last-minute reminder, but there are now exactly four more shopping days until Christmas. And that means a very real problem to those of us who like to put things off, as who doesn't? Is there anyone you've overlooked? Anyone to whom you want to give something beautiful, practical, and inexpensive? Well, you'll find the answer in Fire King oven glass. Whether it's a single Fire King casserole or an entire set of Fire King oven glass, prices are unbelievably low. And it'll take a minimum of shopping time at your favorite chain, variety, hardware, or department store. So remember, with housekeeping a real problem in this post-war era, Fire King Oven Glass is a gift that makes it easier in so many ways. Because Fire King makes foods go farther and enables you to turn leftovers into delicious main courses. Fire King Oven Glass is a product of Anchor Hawking. A great name in glass. Oh, I don't recognize any picture here, Logan. Oh, me either. Oh, golly. Captain, why don't you have some good-looking crooks in your files? I'm going to have nightmares looking at pictures of so many ugly men. Oh. You should see the women. <laughs> Logan, you know, there's one picture here that bothers me. It, it, it resembles the guy a lot, but, but well, look at the description that goes with it. Nick Pencer, Woolstock Prison, discharged 1944, armed robbery. Age 30, height 5 feet. Well, you said your fat guy was a 6-footer and at least 45 years old. Yeah, he weighed a good 250-plus, too. This Nick Pence's weight has given us only 135. Well, they can't be the same man, then. No, no, not a chance. It's funny, though, there is a resemblance. Well, uh, we need more than that. Uh, let's all go home and get some sleep. Me yeah. for that. Me, too. I'm so tired, I can't think. I'm falling over. I'll murder anybody who wakes me up before noon tomorrow. <laughs> Hello. Morning, Annie. Who's this? Wake up, kid. It's Casey. Casey? Oh, oh, Casey. Yeah, Casey, yeah. You remember me, don't you? Yes, I do. And it's only 9 o'clock, and what is the big uh, idea? Annie, Annie, look. I think I know where to look for that fat guy. You do? I certainly do. The old beam wasn't working last night. But when I woke up a few minutes ago, I had it. The strong resemblance between that young half-pint crook, Nick Penser, and our big, fat, 45-year-old guy can't be just coincidental, Annie. They must be relatives, maybe brothers. Mm-hmm, go well, on. Well, I've, I've looked in the phone book and found only one Penser listed, John Penser, contractor, who lives and does business out on Dudley Road. I thought you might like to drive out there with me and see what John Penser looks like. Uh, why don't you have the cops go out and look at him? But Annie, you're not awake yet. Only you and I can identify that fat guy. Besides, if, if you and I find him, Annie, we get, we get an exclusive. The cops are in on it. Every paper in town will have Well, it. I'm awake now, all right. Where will I meet you? I'll be outside your door with a car in 15 minutes. Casey, I've got to dress. Uh, oh, we'll make it a half an hour, then. We'll make it a full hour, and no sooner. Well, what are you going to dress, yourself or a Christmas tree? Listen, Annie, I can bathe, shave, and get into my clothes in 10 minutes. I put on underwear. Goodbye. <laughs> Get 
getting close to that address, Annie. Yeah. This isn't a very attractive neighborhood. No. John Pence, a contractor, can't be much of a concern. And John Pence, a contractor, may be no relation whatever to the Nick Pence in the police files. The name's very unusual, Ann. I have a hunch. Uh-oh. There's the place. Yep. I'll stop here so we can look the joint over. Well, there's a concrete garage attached to the house with a good-sized truck inside and room for another. Hmm. Concrete mixer in the workyard. Oh, Casey, established businessman. Don't go in for kidnapping. I think we're on a wild goose chase. Annie, that guy coming out of the garage. Hmm, what about him? He's just a skinny little... Annie, you need glasses and a more photographic memory. He's the man of that police picture. Of course, Nick Penser. Now I know my hunch was right. He's looking over here. Well, he's never seen this before, but I'll get rolling anyway. Now, how can we find out if he has a fat brother? Well, we drop into one of these neighborhood stores and make a few inquiries. Then what? Well, how can I tell until I find out what I hope to find out? Uh, Annie, you're the darndest girl for asking questions. You really mm. are. Now, let's stop there. Now, we'll stop here. We'll go into this little drugstore right here. The druggist usually knows everybody in the neighborhood. Come on. Okay, but I think it would be simpler and more sensible to make inquiries at the precinct police station. I don't want the cops in on this until we know where we stand. Here, let me do the talking. It's your party, wise guy. You handle everything. Uh... What can I do for you young people? Oh, hello, Pop. We're going to have, um... Well, what kind of ice cream soda do you want, Annie? If I must have an ice cream soda, chocolate. Chocolate. Same for me. Uh, two chocolate sodas. That's right. Oh, huh? uh, by the way, uh, I'm looking for a party in this neighborhood by the name of Penser. I imagine you know the family well. Penser? Yeah. Never heard the name before. Uh, you never heard of it? Change my order to raspberry. Uh, yes, miss. One raspberry. <clears throat> I'm uh, just a stranger here. Come down from upstate to handle this place while my son's away hunting. Maybe my granddaughter can tell you what you want to know. Say, uh, Katie. Yes, Grandpa? Come here. Fellas looking for a party by the name of Penner. Penner? No, not uh, Penner. Pencer. Oh, I know the Pencers. All of them. You do? That's swell. Eh? Mr. Pencil is down the street. Uh-huh. Over his office. He's a contractor. Uh, what's he look like? Is he... Uh, uh, is Mr. Pencer short and skinny and his first name is Nick. Uh, well, Nick Pence is not the contract. Yes, he is. Ever since he got out of prison a couple of years ago. You say somebody's gone to prison, Katie? No, Grandpa. They've come out. That serves him right, then. The man's reformed now. Oh, that's bad, very bad. Well, Grandpa's a little deaf. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, sister, I, I understand that my friend, Nick, has a brother or a cousin. No. Uh, uh, maybe an uncle? No. Uh, here's the sodies. Uh, who gets your raspberry? He does. Uh, here you are, mister. Thanks. And, Mr. Casey, you have earned it. Sister, you mean Mr. Nick Penser has no relatives at all? He's got a sister and a nephew. Oh, that's a great help. How old's the nephew? About ten? No, ma'am. It's the funniest thing. Mr. Gus Penser's a lot older than his uncle. Huh? Mr. Gus is Mr. Nick's partner, I think. And he comes in here all the time. What does Mr. Gus Penser look like? Well, he's tall and fat and... In the face, he looks like Mr. Nick. Annie, give me that chocolate. You take the raspberry. Here's Mr. Gus now. Oh, Casey. He's our fat guy. Mr. Gus, these yeah. people were just asking about you. They're friends of Mr. Uh, Nick. Oh, that's bad. Is that so? He recognizes us, Casey. Yeah. Wasn't it lucky I had dropped in here when I did to find friends of Nick's? Uh, Grandpa, go back to your back room and put me up uh, two bits worth of turpentine. Uh, two bits worth of turpentine? Uh, go along and help him, sissy. He can never find anything. I'll no, show him, no, Mr. Gus. No. So you two were asking about me. You've been told that we were. I noticed a car outside with a press sign on it. Yours? Yeah. And you were looking for me because of what you happened to see in Franken's yesterday. If I said no, you wouldn't believe me. Right. This hand in my pocket has a gun in it, mister. So do exactly as I tell you. Okay. Remember, and don't pull anything. Here's a bottle of turps. Thanks, Grandpa. Here's your two bits. Uh, come on with me, folks. You said you wanted to pay Nick a visit. Uh, Casey. We got no choice, Annie. Right. Uh, so long, Grandpa. Hey, ain't you folks going to finish your sodas? No, we lost our appetites. You didn't take even a sip of your raspberry, mister. That's what you think, sister. Get into your car. Both in the front seat. You drive, fella. I'll sit in back with this gat. Well, I drive, too. Just down the street to Nick's place. Mine. He and I are partners. 
and everything. And he'll be tickled to see your old friend. <laughs> Turn into the work yard and park in our garage. And next to the truck there. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Now what do we do? You and your boyfriend don't do anything, lady. And to make sure you don't... You hit Casey with your gun! And you get the shape! That'll keep the two of you quiet for a while. Nick! Nick! Yeah? What do you want, Gus? Come into the garage, quick. Okay. Whose car you got in there? You'll see. Come inside and help me close these doors. Okay. Hey, hey. What's the idea? Take a look inside this car. Who's the guy and the dame? They're the two I told you about last night. Saw that dip take the hot dough from my pocket. They got wise to the way out and located us. Hey, police? No. These two are newspaper mugs. I figured they were making this play on their own, so we got to take care of them. Uh, we can't bump them off here. We can. We do it nice, clean, and quiet. Get those big spools of adhesive tape from the house. What are you going to do? You'll see. Get that tape. Yeah. Yeah. Got the gal all tied up, Gus. And help me with this guy. Yeah. Wrap some more tape around his ankles. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He's fixed now and solid. All right. I climb into that truck and start the motor, Nick. Oh, the carbon monoxide treatment, huh? Yeah. Nice, clean, and quiet. We just lock them in this closed garage to breathe the gas. Tonight, when it's dark, we get rid of their bodies in their car. Start the motor. <laughs> Tape off my mouth against that fender. Nod your head if you're okay, kid. Good. <coughs> I'm gonna try to pull the adhesive tape off your wrist with my teeth. I'm getting lightheaded. Gas is beginning to work. <coughs> I've got the tape. Now pull and turn your wrists. Pull more, Annie. <coughs> there, that did it. Your hands are free. Pull the tape off your mouth now. Oh. Okay. Casey, the gas. Keep your head down low, kid. Try to hold on. I will, I will. Pull this tape off my hands. You, you, you better let me free my ankles first so I can get to that truck and shut off the motor. No, no, no. Free my hands. Those two guys may be just outside where they can hear. Yes, yeah, but, but, but if it keeps on running... We'll, we'll... If it doesn't keep on running, we'll have no second chance like this. Free my hands. All right, all right. I, I, I've got the end loose. I... Pull now. There, yeah, does it. Now, unwind your ankles while I get this stuff off of mine. What What good will it do us? We, we, we can't get out of here. We'll get out. Don't this, breathe, Judy. This, this we'll get out. garage is solid concrete. And I heard them lock those heavy doors when they went out. So... Nah, I've got my ankles free. Now, hang on, kid. I'm picking you up. What are you going to do? I'm putting you in this truck. This truck? Why? It's taking us out of here. Keep your head down. Okay. I'm driving through those doors. Okay, you are through. Pure air. Wait a minute, look. Also, those two panzer guys, they heard us. Listen, they have guns, too. Step on my gas, Casey. Drive past them. Let's get away. I can't. You, you oh, can't. Oh, What's the I matter? I stole the motor. Duck, they're shooting. Oh, why are they running away? They're, they're getting into that car. They're going to try to get away. If I can only get this motor started again. That did it. Now, come on. Casey, don't drive toward their car. They'll stop shooting. I'm driving into their car. <laughs> This 10-ton truck does a nice job when it hits a tin can like oh, that. Oh, Casey. My nerves will never be the same again. I'll never recognize mine either. Come on, let's call City Desk. Get the cops out here so we can get to the Blue Note. I need another 
pair of glasses, the kind you fill. Recently, in a big eastern city, a group of trained men and women called on thousands of housewives and asked this simple question. What kind of container do you prefer for the foods you buy? An overwhelming majority of housewives said they preferred to buy food packed in glass. Among them were a great many mothers of small children, and by a ratio of more than eight to one, these mothers said they insisted on prepared baby foods packed in glass. They gave many reasons, as you might expect, but here are the three reasons mentioned most frequently. First, glass lets you see what you buy before you buy it. Second, you can heat serve and store leftover portions of prepared baby food in the same glass container. And third, these young mothers agreed that sterilized glass containers are cleaner and more sanitary. You can buy an increasing number of the better brands of food packed in glass, and all of the better brands of prepared baby food come to you in anchor glass containers sealed with tamper-proof anchor vacuum caps. Both products of Anchor Hawking. A great name in glass. You didn't kill them two kidnappers when you threw that truck at them, Casey? No, Bethelbert, no. The cops pulled them out of the wreckage in fairly good shape, considering. They'll be able to walk to the chair. How about the ransom money? Did the cops find it? Yeah, yeah. Gus, the fat guy, confessed the Walters' kidnapping and told where he and Nick had hidden the dough. Gee, and all because you and Miss Williams did some Christmas shopping. <laughs> Say, what happened to the little dip, Fingers Fogarty? Well, in trying to clear himself of the kidnap and murder charge, Ethelbert, Fingers made so many admissions about his own specialty that the cops can keep him in jail until 1999. Gee, 1999, huh? Good heavens, Casey, what's hmm? that coming in the door? Hmm? What, what on earth? Hey, hey, what do you say, mister? That's the biggest tree I got on the wagon, okay? Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, now that's what I call a real Christmas tree. I thought, but what are you going to do with such a big tree? Well, you couldn't get a little tree in that big room. <laughs> Prime Photographer, starring Stotts Cotsworth as Casey, is brought to you each Thursday at this time by the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, makers of Fire King Oven Glass, Anchor Glass Containers, Anchor Caps and Closures, all products of the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, a great name in glass. Photographer, directed by John Deeds, is written by Alonzo Dean Cole and is based on the fictional character of Casey, created by George Harmon Cox. The original music is by Archie Blyer, and the program features Miss Leslie Woods as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. Herman Chittison is the Blue Note pianist. Thursday night on CBS is the biggest show in town, so stay tuned for exciting dramatizations on Reader's Digest Radio Edition, which follows immediately over most of these stations. Now for our sponsor, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, and all of us on the show, this is Tony Marvin wishing every one of you a joyful and happy holiday at this Christmas time. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>